I want to now uh, turn to our special guest this evening, His Holiness Sachinandan Swami. He has been uh, practicing Krishna Bhakti for the last 50 plus years. I don't know the exact number, but at least 50 years, I know for sure. And in that spirit, he has dedicated his life to uh, fully, and not just a, a Monday to Friday job, but Monday to Sunday and beyond sometimes, if that's possible, to propagating and sharing this beautiful message of bhakti yoga. And the chanting specifically is what he's known for. And uh, he's, yeah, I, I, I don't know how, it's hard to give a bigger appreciation without me going off on one and really trailing and trailing and trailing. But just to say, I really appreciate this person. He's given me so much in my life in terms of uh, the lessons of chanting and bringing me to a point where I realize it's not about me all the time, but about divine connection. So can we please uh, welcome him with a very, very loud round of applause, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your kindness and uh, by the way, you are chanting very nicely. I was thinking really that uh, this assembly this evening is uh, really composed of uh, yeah, people who are ready to embark on a journey inwards and then carry what they experience. Uh, also outwards through their singing, through their dancing, through their chairing also. It was almost impossible to stop uh, you chairing. <laughs> we, we had to use a powerful mantra. <laughs> uh, thank you. You are really a wonderful example of uh, people who are ready really to go on the ultimate adve adventure. Uh, the adventure that leads inside where they can find something uh, which has to do with the spiritual self and with divine connection. I would, I don't wish to speak very long here, but I want to say two things uh, to tune you in perhaps into the next kirtans. Um, obviously when we chant or sit down to chant, someone else sits down just very close with us, so close that he's uncomfortably close often. It's, it's our normal life. Um, what this means is that as we chant, our mind uh, sometimes uh, breaks out of this sacred space which is created through the uh, spiritual sound vibration and, and goes back to yeah, our job, our frustration of losing money. Uh, why did we break up? Was it necessary? Why was he so dishonest with me? You know, we, uh, our mind goes back into our ordinary lives and our concerns and we don't stay any longer in the sacred space. Mm, but the chanting uh, is really a possibility to control this mind, which is often as restless as, as a storm. You, it just goes and happens. The mind and the thoughts happen to most of us. <laughs> uh, uh, this chanting, or especially a mantra, is something where our mind can find relief, it can uh, find peace, and it uh, also can find uh, as the sacred space within. On, on my first journey to India, I noticed something very interesting. Two elephants. <laughs> um, the first elephant which I noticed was going through the uh, through a market area and as it was going I noticed people became a little bit afraid and then all of a sudden the elephant started to grab 
bananas, uh, apples. They can eat a lot, you know. And, and he just got out of control and the people were screaming as he was <coughs> grabbing left and right things and just dumping it in its mouth. Mm. Uh, I saw another elephant, the second, not the second day, it was later in the week. And he passed through the same road there were the same apples and orange, or not too many, or yes, oranges also, bananas, grapes. But the elephant passed through very calmly and no one was afraid. You know what was the difference between these two elephants? Uh, one elephant had nothing in its trunk. The trunk was going left and right, and in the the other elephant had an expert mahout, they are called elephant person on top of the head, <laughs> and he had put a stick, a little stick like this, into the trunk of the elephant, and just by holding this stick, the elephant trunk remained you could say, uh, peaceful. <laughs> uh, so, when we chant mantra, we do the same thing with our mind. We give it something to hold on. And if it holds on to the mantra, especially this mantra, mantra means to, to, to free the mind. No? If we do this and keep going back to that stick in the trunk of the mind, hmm? then the mind will not create havoc. I have heard if if you, when the elephant gets you know gets wild and enthusiastic for the bananas and the apples, if you would try to catch the trunk, the, the trunk would just catch you and throw you mm, into the bananas or wherever. <laughs> uh, it, it, they are very strong, these trunks. They can lift uh, uh, trees. They're, therefore, elephants are used in constructions and so on. Uh, and so in the same way, if you try to hold the mind and bring it under the control, wrestle it down, it just doesn't work. It becomes even more furious. But if you give the mind the mantra to hold on, it's just like the mahout who gives it uh, a stick, the elephant, and uh, then the elephant is harmless. He's peaceful. He's nice. So nice that the mahout might give him at the end a few bananas. Um, so uh, this is the first level of kirtan. As you do kirtan, you will see the trunk of your mind your elephant mind, uh, go grabbing things, you know, uh, of your old life, going into your old life. But if you just learn to bring the mind back to the mantra, you will ultimately free the mind, and you will you will become joyful and uh, uninhibited, free from your blockages, and just. Be, be nice. <laughs> this is the first level of chanting, to always bring the mind back to the liberating mantra stick and to carry that throughout the practice. First level, but there's much more. These holy names are called Nam avatars. Have you heard the word avatar? It's usually a divine persona, a divine manifestation of the divine who has descended from the spiritual platform into our realm. Like like Buddha is an avatar, Narasimha Dev Ram is an avatar. Mm. There are many avatars. They come down from a totally different 
a realm, come into our world and then help us to ascend or rise uh, above our, uh, our little concerns and worries and anxieties and come uh, and go to the level from which they have come. So uh, here are two dimensions of kirtan. One is for the person who is not yet devotionally inclined. It's also for the one who might never become devotionally inclined. He will use the chanting just as something to hold on so that the restless mind doesn't create havoc. Uh, but then comes another, there's another level for those who are, let us say, devotionally inclined, spiritually, uh, they like to get, enter into a divine connection. For them, these uh, divine names are Nam avatars, or uh, the divinity having descended into our level and being, uh, being there in order to help us rise uh, beyond, what do you say in England, above and beyond, no? Uh, above and beyond. So, so in the kirtan which we will now sing, uh, we will have it projected for you on on your beautiful screen. Yeah, and uh, I, I, you can. Uh, I want to request you to first practice the kirtan on the first level. Whenever your mind goes as it will. It's after all like the trunk of the elephant, uh, <laughs> grabbing things from this world. Memories, desires, expectations, future plans. Bring it back to the mantra and see what it does. And then we will have a second level in, the, in a moment. So can we please, I'll sit down, sit straight, I wanted to say. Musicians, we are on C sharp at the moment. Might change, <laughs> but uh, so that you know with the instruments where to go. So, everyone, your task is very simple hold on to the mantra and free your head. Radhe, Radhe, Govinda, Govinda, Catch the sound vibration and 
please hold it, hold on to it. And you will soon see that you will fall into the sacred space. Something will happen. So please, let's, you can do it a little bit. I can hear from the sound. You still have some, some reserves in you. <laughs> okay, so everyone, let's chant now.
राधे राधे
request you now to take your seat again. We will discover something very nice in a moment. So. What we will do is we will all chant together and after the chanting we will just sit and let the sound vibration soak in a little. We will not do anything, we will just let the echo do something. You, you will see something wonderful will happen. So please take a deep inhale and sing. Thank you very much. Mm. Maybe it did not work the way <laughs> I wanted it to work, mm. uh, but uh, what we will feel when we uh, do this little discipline of holding on to the mantra, just like the restless trunk of the elephant which holds on to the sticks, or restless mind, if it just holds on to the mantra, then there will be an echo, something that accompanies you a little after the kirtan. And uh, uh, I, I didn't really guide you properly into this, but uh, uh, you, you can do it on your own. It, it will echo, it's called the Anahata Shapta, the unstruck sound. Mm. This is a sound that is struck. No, I'm, I'm producing it by bringing these two things together. And then there's also the echo, the Anahata, the, anahata, the unstruck sound. And that will, that will start to work in your mind and then you will be come after some time. Uh, totally spiritualized and 
you will stop being a human doing, you will become a human being again. That's an interesting project. Uh, so thank you very much. This is about the first mantra. We will go now one step further for the last mantra which we will chant. It's a famous Hare Krishna mantra. Um, we will put it on and uh, one word about it. Once a student, a restless student, an impatient student came to his master and said, Master, what can I do to, the, to make the Supreme uh, uh, appear in my heart? And the master said, uh, as much as you can do to make the sun rise. That's a profound answer. Can any one of us do anything to make the sun rise? I mean, unless you are... Krishna, <laughs> I doubt that you can. In the Mahabharata, there is a, there is an incident where uh, Krishna makes the sun rise after it had set again. But you cannot do anything to make the supreme appear. Oh, oh, said the student, the impatient student. But you tell me to do so many things. Uh, you tell me to not eat meat, to not uh, drink alcohol, ooh, uh, to not do this and that, and you tell me do this, rise early, um, you tell me to chant my mantras and meditate and take a bath and all this. Uh, if, if this doesn't bring... Uh, the revelation of the Supreme. Why do you tell me all these spiritual practices? And the Master said, I'm telling you this so that you make sure that you are not asleep when the sun rises. <laughs> I think this is a very, very nice uh, uh, theme for our next kirtan. Uh, yes, we will now do another kirtan. Uh, and uh, uh, all we can do is, is uh, uh, we can try to sing with some devotion, hoping that the Nam Avatar will happen for us, that the Divinity, the Supreme Being, will appear in our heart. Uh, I'm remembering a cartoon, I, I saw it somewhere. There is a. Mm, <laughs> is someone, he looks a little, you have to help me here now with the right English word. Is there an English word which says bedraggled? Um, Disheveled. Bedraggled. New word creation perhaps. Um, and he, he's there, you know, his hair is all over the place and his... his, his uh, Pants are up uh, like Michael Jackson, but not due to a fashion, but due to, uh, uh, since to, to he's really poor, you know, and he stands before God and he, he says, uh, he gives his, he, he, he has his heart in his hands and says, that's all what I can give. You know, he really looks poor. And the, the Supreme puts his hand out like this and said, says, that's all I want. <laughs> so in, in Kirtan, when we want to enter the, the dimension, the divine dimension, which is beyond mind control and, and keeping the mind, uh, the restless mind under control, we are actually uh, trying to offer uh, not just our voices, not just our mind in focus and concentration, we also try to offer our heart in some devotional expression like, like, please accept me, or if you are an intellectual, please let us have a divine reunion. You know, you can express it in many ways. Let me feel uh, that uh, more than human uh, reality. Uh, and... Uh, we will sing the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Is it here? Yep. Yes, it is there. 
and some beautiful clouds are also there <laughs> moving that's nice uh, <laughs> one, one moment we have to do something musical here For those, uh, because we are, uh, we are. I'm, I'm the first. No, I'm not often in the Radhika Ranjan band, and so I have to t tell to, uh, to the musicians, we are now on C. <laughs> <laughs>
all of us let us um, bring all the energy inside to our heart and together one last time or maybe one one last time before the last time <laughs> for this evening let us all sing in a try to sing in a devotional mood begging for the sun to rise perhaps the sun will rise says it all. Three times. 
time small please this one more time but this time our consciousness will go beyond this room we will try to bring the spiritual atmosphere or benefit or whatever we have have had into the world we will focus our attention outward now outward of London even and let this divine sound vibration, this healing sound vibration go to whoever needs it, to whichever country needs it, whichever conflict needs it. This last part, I think, is very important for each one of us to be aware of. A, f a few days ago, uh, to, uh, there was an unexpected visit to our ashram. Mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, the devotees came up to me with panic in the eyes and said, the police is there and they want to speak to you. So I went down, there was a polis a person, and the polis addressed me. We have come here, we are looking for someone. Do you know this person? And the picture was put before my eyes. I said, no, no idea. <laughs> and then, I, then he said, okay. Uh, um, uh, then I said, what, what is this all about? Do you have the big car there and you are here with weapons? Mm. He said, oh, oh, this person was speeding up for 20 kilometers and we are trying to find him. <laughs> I said, what for such a little thing? You come with weapons and... Uh, please help me. Handcuffs, yes, handcuffs. <laughs> And then the police person said, uh, we also wanted to see the famous monk. <laughs> I said, you can come any time and you, we, some, we, eat, we cook very nicely. You can also come, but why all this drama? <laughs> and then I, I said, no, I'm serious. Are you not aware that at the moment there is a lot of conflict in the world and people are worried and the 
elections come in America, and uh, oh, you know, there's so much. And, and you are going for 20 kilometers an hour. And then the police person became very serious and said, yes, I know. I often ask myself, what do I do for the world? Obviously chasing a poor person, <laughs> which is sped up because perhaps he was late for his job interview or so on. <laughs> That's not, but see, and he became very serious. I am a small person. I can try and whatever I can to, to help people to, to maintain some order. I, I feel without laws, people would just fall over each other and hurt each other even more. So I am a small candle. I'm not the sun. Mm, let me do my candle work. Mm, and I said, that's a good point. I'm not even a candle, I'm a match. Um, but let me do my match work uh, and bring some light into the world. I think that's very important for spiritual people to, uh, to do good for others, not just to soak in the good for themselves and take in the good for themselves, but to do something for the, for the benefit of others. And, uh, that is something very nice. It's a uh, daya or compassion towards others. It's very good. So I thank you all very, very much. Let me secretly look at the wristwatch. Oh, I'm over time, but not too much. But uh, still. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can you please show your appreciation for Salina Sachinamahara?